Alright, this is a watercolor project sketch. Now, you should have gotten this sketch in your kit that when you picked up your watercolors from me. If not, there is one linked in the canvas assignment that you can click on and reprint. So, I'm just going to explain this worksheet and then show you my example. Now, keep in mind that this must be submitted and I need to see it before you should start on your actual watercolor project because let me catch the mistakes, let me catch um, what's going to lose your point, lose you points before before you even start um, so we can help you out there. So you have two parts. Part one is on one side, part two on the other. Part one, in each box create a simple sketch of possible designs you want to use for your project. So these could be like totally different pictures or kind of the same picture, just different compositions. So we're just getting basic thumbnail sketches like um, just what composition do you want on your project? So make sure the objects are easier, easy to see. They should touch at least one edge of the box. So here's my example. I had a couple of ideas here. I had a peacock. Um, I had taika, as always. I had to think about using taika. Cherry blossoms, or like more of an abstract type design. So um, you choose your best one after you've sketched it. Just make sure you look up references. You know, give yourself the best chance of making this look good. So. Out of these four, choose your favorite. Now, you don't have to get my approval at this step. This is up to you. Ask your parents, ask the people around you if you're not sure which one to pick. So, like I said, I went with a peacock. So then, you'll on the back of your worksheet, you're going to do a more finished sketch of that one. So, creating the final design. Choose your favorite design from the other side of this um, paper to create the finished design. Once you've drawn the outlines, break up your drawing to look like stained glass. That's important. Remember, the finished product cannot have too large or too small spaces. Um, you'll also create a simple border design and use colored pencils to show your color plan. Um, so you do not have to use, or you shouldn't use watercolors on this. You do want to use colored pencils. Um, this big note, remember to blend or fade the colors within each shape. So, um, uh, stained glass art often has color blends within their shapes. If you look at the examples I provided um, on this part of the canvas assignment, you can see that. So it's a little bit hard to see on your copies, but these la this last outer edge of squares is all for your border design. It said the grayed out mark, grayed out area marks the border, um, and it's all pre-gridded for you to copy onto your finished. Um, a piece of watercolor paper that you're going to be using. So remember when you finish this you need to upload it and put a picture on canvas. So let me show you mine. Um, so this is my peacock design. Now you can see my color blends even in the border here. So I went yellow to green, purple to blue. So I stuck with um, a cohesive palette meaning I chose certain colors that I wanted to use and stuck to those so it didn't look too overwhelming. That's a big suggestion I have for you. Now looking throughout my design, you can see everything has been broken up so that um, I don't have too large of spaces. Like even inside the peacock, I have a line right here that breaks it up um, so it's more like stained glass pieces. So think about that when you get to yours, but there is my example for you.